In this lesson, we'll look at how to solve a physics problem involving three charged spheres that are positioned in the corners of a equilateral triangle. The question reads, three spheres, each with a negative charge of 4.0 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulombs, are fixed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle whose sides are 0 0.20 meters long. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the net electrical force on each sphere. The nice thing about this question is that the charges are positioned at equal distance from one another, as they are in an equilateral triangle, and that each of the charges are negative. So we don't have to worry about a push-pull situation. With that being said, let's begin with an illustration. Here we have an equilateral triangle, and each of these side lengths is 0 0.2 meters. We'll represent the charges with these circles, and they're all negative. Because these two spheres are of the same charge, being negative, we're going to experience a repulsion. So this one, relative to this charge, will push it this way, and this charge will push this charge this way, along that same angle. To find out the force in which each of these are exerting onto the sphere, we only need to do one calculation using Coulomb's law since they're both the same distance and the same charge. So Coulomb's law is shown right here where we have F is equal to our constant K, which is written on the screen as 9.0 times 10 to the power of 9 newtons times meters squared per Coulomb squared. And that gets multiplied to Q sub 1 and Q sub 2, which represents the charges of these spheres. Since they're both the same, given in the question as negative 4.0 times 10 to the power of 6 coulombs, all we have to do is take this value and square it, since we're multiplying it in itself twice. And that gets divided by the distance between them, which is 0 0.20 raised to the power of 2, according to the formula, r to the power of 2. And just for future reference, when you're using this formula, you don't need to take into account the symbol for the charges because we're only concerned about the magnitude and not the direction. So given that this is being raised to the power of 2, it doesn't matter. But nonetheless, keep that in mind. Now we'll use our calculator to calculate the force. We start with the first factor and make sure that you put each factor in its own parentheses. That way our calculator gives us the right number at the very end. We have negative 4.0 times 10 to the power of negative 6. And that's being raised to the power of 2. Then this gets divided by 0 0.20 to the power of 2. We should have two significant figures, since this is two significant figures, and that one is as well. We end up with an answer of 3.6 newtons. So that is the force that occurs between these two charges and these two charges, and they are happening here, and they're happening here. So we need to find the resultant vector of these two blue vectors. Using the tail-to-tip method, we can kind of visualize where it will be. It will be taking this vector and tagging it along over here. It will be somewhere there. So we need to find the coordinates of this point, the x and y coordinates of this point, so that we can apply the Pythagorean theorem later and use trigonometric function tangent to find its angle. So how do we do that? We have to look at the x and y components of each of these blue vectors. So on an xy plane, we'll say that this direction is positive and that direction is positive, whereas going down is negative and going in that direction is negative. For this vector, it does not have a y component. Notice that it is directly on the x-axis. So let's focus on the x components and then the y components. The x component of this vector will be negative 3.6 newtons. And the x component of this vector requires a little bit of trigonometry. Breaking this vector down into its x component would look like this. And to find that, given that we already know the hypotenuse, we need to know the angle here, and we have to pick the correct trigonometric ratio. So let me show you how this looks like on an xy plane, isolated from all the other illustrations. Here's what this vector looks like. It looks like that. And again, we are looking for its x component. 
this purple one. We know that the triangle is an equilateral triangle, which means that each of its internal angles will be 60 degrees. So that will be 60 degrees. If that's 60 degrees, then this should also be 60 degrees since they are across one another. So now we have the angle and we also have the hypotenuse being 3.6. We can use cosine. Cosine 60 is equal to the adjacent, which is that purple one, over the hypotenuse of 3.6. If we solve for adjacent, which represents that purple one, we get 3.6 cosine 60 degrees, and that's ADJ. Now remember, the cast rule says that cosine is positive here, all trig functions are positive here, only sine is positive here, and only tangent is positive there. Because only tangent is positive there, and we're using cosine within this quadrant, then whatever you get when you calculate that will be negative. Okay, so what we will do is write down the second x component being negative 3.6 cosine 60 degrees. And I place that negative there because we are using cosine and we do have to respect the cast rule. So we just found the x and the y components of our two blue vectors. Now, the y component of this blue vector here, the one that I'm hovering over, is zero. It's right on the x-axis, there's no y component. And the y component of this one, we use the same sort of framework as before, but of course, we have to use sine this time since we are looking for the y component. The y component would be this thing. We can move that, just to give you a better visual, we can move that there and you can see why sine would work. Sine would work because now it is opposite and hypotenuse. So I'll write down again, negative 3.6 sine 60 degrees. I put negative because only tangent can be positive here. This is why understanding vectors is so important when it comes to physics. So now that we have our x and our y components, we will add them up. Let's use our calculator. We have negative 3.6 plus negative 3.6 times cosine 60 and that is equal to negative 5.4 newtons. And over here, we can write down negative 3.6 sine 60, and that is negative 3.117 newtons. So the coordinates of this point, of our resultant vector, will be negative 5.4 and roughly negative 3.117. Now we have to find out the magnitude of that vector using the Pythagorean theorem and the overall direction. So we're looking for the magnitude of this black vector and its direction, the angle. So the Pythagorean theorem, I'll say f is equal to negative 5.4 raised to the power of 2 plus negative 3.117 raised to the power of 2. That will give us our magnitude, negative 5.4 to the power of 2 plus negative 3.117 to the power of 2. And that is a magnitude of around 6.2. We need this to two significant figures, newtons. And we will use the trigonometric function tangent. Tangent theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. The opposite is negative 3.117 over the adjacent is negative 5.4. Two negatives make a positive. So we have tangent inverse of 3.117 divided by 5.4 and we get 30 degrees around that. Now what does that mean? That means if the charge was originally placed at the origin as suggested in this drawing it would be 30 degrees below 180 or 210 degrees. But since we don't know where the three spheres are positioned on the xy plane, remember it was just an assumption, we need a more general direction for all three. Remember that this internal angle is 60 degrees 
And altogether, this would be 120 plus 60 makes 180. So to state where the sphere will generally move, we can say 150 degrees away from each side, since 30 degrees plus 120 is 150. If you have any questions as to how I came up with the answer, please use the comment section below or use our website at biology-forms.com for more information. I hope you learned something. We'll see you again next time.